Hey guys, it's Stan here. Today we're gonna talk about why stock prices go up and down. So in today's video I'm gonna give you the main reasons why stock prices go up and also why they go down. If you want a very quick and short answer it's gonna be because of supply and demand. But what does it really mean? Because actually <laughs> you will see that every price uh, fluctuates because, uh, because of uh, supply and demand. So first of all let's try to understand this basic economical concept. So supply and demand. Uh, think about rent prices in city centers, for example, New York City. Um, you will see that before the pandemic, for example, there was a lot of demand uh, for uh, apartments in New York. Supply was kind of limited because they were not building enough, which means that the rent prices went up uh, very quickly in the last 20 years. On the opposite, since the crisis, uh, it was less attractive to rent in New York, so demand for apartment went down. Uh, supply was still stable, which means that uh, at the end of the day, price is going down. So that's exactly the same which is happening with stocks, because stocks are highly liquid assets, which means you can easily sell and buy them on stock exchanges. So supply and demand is definitely the reason why the stock price fluctuates, but it doesn't explain why. Um, Next basic concept, uh, a stock is also called a share and basically if you are buying a share or a stock you are buying a percentage of ownership. If you are buying one stock or one share of Amazon it means you're gonna be the owner of Amazon but only for a little fraction obviously. Um, and then a, a last thing I wanted to mention before we talk about, about the main reasons is the difference between market risk and systemic risk. That's very uh, important to know and to understand when you are talking about stocks and stock prices. Uh, you will see why in a second. Market risk is what affects the entire market so there is no way to escape it. Example, the coronavirus um, affects the entire world, uh, affects the United States and it, it affects all the companies and there is no way uh, to escape it uh, in the stock market. On the other side, uh, you have systemic risk, which affects one industry or one company, and there is a way to uh, escape it, and that's their diversification. You probably remember um, your grandma talking when she said, don't put all your eggs in one basket. That's probably what she meant, you know. So when I say I'm talking about the main reasons why stocks goes, goes up and down, I'm not talking about the market risk, because the market risk is the global risk for the entire world economy, if you want. But I'm going to talk about systemic risk, so actually um, the price fluctuation of one stock of one company. That's going to be the systemic risk, and that's what we're going to talk about right now. Now let's look at what drives a stock price. Imagine uh, today's stock price here, it doesn't matter the price. What matters is not historical information, yesterday's profit, last quarter's dividends and these kind of things. This doesn't matter. What really drives the stock price and what people are looking at when they are buying or selling a stock is what's going on in the future in this, with this company. What does it mean? They're looking at future growth, future profits, future cash flows, future opportunities, and future risks. Actually, a company uh, that is listed on a stock exchange has to give you uh, an outlook about these different things, and that's basically exactly um, to inform the investor what, they, what to expect uh, in the future. So, so far, maybe every, everything seems to be super logical, super robotic and mathematical, but uh, as you can see and probably know, stocks are sold and bought by humans and humans have beliefs and uh, disbeliefs. So as you can see, especially as we are talking about future values which are reflected in the stock price, um, it's gonna, it's, it's gonna be, a, a lot of it will be beliefs and disbeliefs. And this is uh, what makes the, uh, this entire thing tricky and that's why there is no formula to calculate a stock um, because it's based on, on future beliefs, future chances, future risks and these kind of things. And, and the thing is, you have, what you have to understand with beliefs and disbeliefs, it's, it sometimes leads or often leads to overreactions and after that corrections. So now that, now that you have a basic knowledge of stocks, let's talk about why they go up first.
the stock price depends on future beliefs and disbeliefs. So the first reason why stocks go up is when companies beat expected forecasts. What does it mean? As a listed company, you have to obviously talk about your forecast, what you're expecting, sales forecast, profits and these kind of things. And a lot of analysts that are following your companies will also uh, do their own forecasts. What happens is, let's say, Take Apple for, uh, for an example. If let's say uh, the, the goal is uh, to sell 10 million smartphones this quarter and you sell 12 million, so you beat expectations, which means the stock price will go up automatically. The next reason why stocks go up is the release of new promising products. Very simple example, showcase example here. When Apple released their first iPhone in 2007, uh, everybody was like, oh, wow, what an amazing product and the uh, stock price went completely crazy because everybody was uh, seeing that it was a promising, innovative product that would probably change the world and uh, change the company. So the next one is a big one, uh, upgrades from rating agencies and brokers. Actually, every listed company has a very close eye on it. They're watching it on a daily basis because it has a huge impact on your stock price. Uh, what am I talking about here? Um, a listed company is followed by analysts and also by rating agencies such as Fitch, Standard & Poor's, as well as Moody's. These are the kind of the, the big three, uh, the big American trees that, that everybody's following. And it they have a say and they will give a grade to a company and also an outlook. And if it's getting better, then it has a big impact on the stock price. Same for brokers. And also asset managers, for example, if a company like BlackRock, uh, who is investing in stocks, if they are buying your stock or if they are advising their clients to buy, obviously it's going to go up because there is more demand for your stock. Another reason why a stock can jump up pretty high is when there is a bid for acquisition. Let's imagine, for example, a big competitor, com uh, company A, wants to buy company B then usually the stock price of company B will rise sharply. Why? Because the investors here know that A will probably overpay. You know, they will not pay the, the market price, so they, they will not pay $10 uh, per share, which is the market price, but probably 12 or 13 because they want to acquire all the shares of the company. So this is usually the reason and uh, one of the big reasons why a bid for acquisition leads to higher stock prices. The next reason why stocks are going up is pretty controversial. It's share buybacks. So what are share buybacks? Um, in this case, a company buys back its own shares from their shareholders. So that's very strange. You could ask why, but why are they, are they doing it? Well, first of all, it's kind of to re you are rewarding your shareholders by giving them cash, basically. Uh, the, the company is trading their own cash uh, with shares of the shareholders. This is very good for shareholders and that's why uh, it makes the price increase. But let me explain you why uh, with this example here. So basically when a company is buying back their own shares, it means there are less shares on the market, uh, which means basically the demand is maybe is still the same, but the supply is reduced. There are less shares, which means the price is going up. That's comparable to, for example, if a city would say, okay, we're destroying a lot of apartments, um, demand will still be the same, supply of apartments will go down, which means there would be less apartments for as many people as before, so the price here would go up. So that's kind of controversial, but uh, every big company does it because they know exactly that it's a reward for shareholders and that it's going to pump up uh, the stock price. <music> why stocks tend to go down sometimes. Um, as you can see, the list is kind of the contrary as what I just mentioned, but there will be other arguments uh, that are completely separate from what I just said about go going up. So make sure to stay tuned until the end of the video. Uh, so first of all, there is uh, underperformance and unfulfilled expectations. As I mentioned, it's all about future beliefs. If uh, you are not fulfilling these beliefs, uh, you are punished by the market and your stocks will go down because demand is going down. Um, then definitely losing products is pretty bad. 
For example, if you think about the, the pharma industry, for example, the end of a patent can be very bad because uh, you, competition comes in uh, because patent is over. Um, then there is also downgrades and negative outlooks from rating agencies and asset managers. These are kind of the influences of the financial world. So if they say, okay, your company is maybe not as good as expected, well, then uh, the market reacts and uh, it's, go it's going down. Uh, and then there is also failed acquisition. As I mentioned before, stocks are going up when there is a bid from an acquisition to buy your company. But uh, they're also going, the stock is also going down if this acquisition failed. Basically, it, it can fail in different ways, either because uh, the government is saying, oh, no, we are blocking this transaction. Another reason I have not mentioned in the going up section, uh, but which is very true for the going down section, is actually new competition. Here, uh, the showcase example is clearly Amazon. Each time that Amazon says, oh, we're going to try healthcare, or we're going to try pharma, or we're going to try streaming, or something like that, the entire industry of um, the, the new segment they want to go in is going down because they know, okay, Amazon is serious about it. They know how it works and that's bad news for us because it's new competition. So this one is definitely a big one uh, to consider. Another big reason for going down is clearly lawsuits, which is also always a bad publicity for your business. And any publicity is not always a good publicity, contrary to marketing, finance is serious about that. So uh, lawsuits always mean trouble and also trouble for your stock price. Think about Volkswagen, for example, with the diesel gate and all the lawsuits, uh, it went pretty bad for them. Or uh, think about all the banking scandals after 2008. Um, so these are pretty big, good examples uh, about lawsuits and the effect on uh, the stock price. So a little conclusion, uh, first of all, uh, there is a variety of reasons why stock fluctuates, so why they go up and down, as I just mentioned. But don't forget that there is always a market risk and a systemic risk. Market risk, which covers the entire world or the entire country, for example, uh, a war or a pandemic, which will hit all the stocks. It doesn't matter what you do. So diversification will not help you in this case. Systemic risk, the risk for one industry or one one company and diversification is key so make sure that if you are into stocks and these kind of things uh, don't try to be uh, super smart and try to pick the right stocks because that's going to be very difficult so always try to diversify for example in an in, in etf let's say for the 500 biggest companies in the us s p 500 so you hold all of them which uh, gonna reduce the systemic risk so the unique risk of the company, if you want. And as you can see, uh, that's, uh, there is no real formula to calculate the stock price because the stock price is driven by behavior and by beliefs. Um, of course, today there are a lot of algorithm and, and, and math involved in these kind of things. But don't forget that at the end of the day, it's driven by humans and humans can be a little bit crazy sometimes. So don't forget that. Also, don't forget that I post once a week every Sunday. So if you like market uh, finance, corporate finance, make sure to subscribe, make sure to like. It takes me about seven to eight hours for each video. A, a, a like is like one second. It would help me a lot with the algorithm. Stay safe, stay tuned. See you soon, guys, next week. Bye-bye.